God's house on this beautiful sunshiny morning. We've come through the winter storm and can't you just feel spring in the air almost. It's still cold out, but in a couple of weeks and the Forsythia will be blooming. <clears throat> there is one who is always faithful and he walks with me and talks with me and tells me I am his own. And you sing with me as we sing in the garden. <clears throat> start the hour. Just when we need a day brightener, God provides it. We're over there with Laura back again this morning, brought by Greg and Charlene. And Donna Thomas has her daughter, Carla Schaefer here. Carla is a child of the church way back and always good to see her from out in Missouri. And uh, our dear friends, and a couple that I love so much, Gary and Pamela Liddell from Fredericksburg, Texas. So our, our day has been brightened and the rest of you make it bright as well. And Audie, good to see you and your wife. 
Well, we're in the process of rebuilding our Sunday school, decimated by the two-year pandemic. So our Sunday school people will have a pizza lunch after the service, and we're gonna see a movie today beyond the blackboard and uh, spend a little time together. And um, last yesterday, Upward was as good as Upward can get. A wonderful day. Now, tomorrow night, game seven, and Saturday, game eight, and just like that, it's over. Except it's never over. Kids will remember you coaches, and they'll brag about the concessions for the rest of their lives. And then we have an amazing awards night on March the 19th. An internationally, nationally famous presenter will be here. Her name is Robin Slain from Florida. She has appeared at NBA halftimes and she's performed in the White House and all, but she can spin 10 basketballs at one time. And her hands up and down her body, it's amazing. And she'll also present the gospel of Jesus Christ. So it's not over, it'll never be over. But we are coming to the close of a fantastic season. After missing last year, we had to rebuild it from the ground up. And our volunteers have been our heroes. And um, we're so grateful for you. Now, Bonnie, she didn't spend so much time getting ready for the children every Sunday. And by the way, our Sunday school is growing now. And we're going to have to add a teacher. And I heard that if Bonnie's going to be that teacher they're going to add. I don't know if we've talked to you yet or not. But anyway, <laughs> boy, boys and girls, come on down. Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Whoa. <Drop it> <laughs> yeah. Be careful with that stick in your mouth. You're going to sit in my spot? Well, that's okay because I'm not going to sit today. Ha, 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 ha. Sit on the floor. Sit on the floor. <laughs> How many of you guys play upward? Awesome. 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 It's a it's terrific, terrific. Are you done? Okay, my turn. <laughs> Um, I have these two lighters, and they're going to represent um, people. I don't know. They all look like people, do they? But they're going to represent people. And maybe we'll even just say they represent kids. I know they say, don't play with lighters. This is not what this is about. Um, as we let Jesus in our hearts and in our mind and just fill us with his spirit we all achieve this little spark huh. but sometimes during the course of our life our spark will go out we get involved with the world and the world does some things to us. We have unforgiveness and we have sometimes bullying, sometimes feelings of not being loved, sometimes sadness, sometimes stress. It all accumulates in our life a lot of times. And if we just sit there and soak in all of that stuff, you know what happens? What? What do you think? The spark goes out. I lost. It won't work. I lost my spark. I know. That's what I said. I lost my spark. How am I going to get my spark back? Maybe. They could share their spark? You are so smart. You are so smart. 
So if we keep people around us that have a spark, Whoa, your spark can come back. Think it'll do it again? It's still gone. So that means we have to keep people around us that have the spark of Christ in them. Try to turn it. What? I know. That's why we have to keep. Ow. It's hot now. <laughs> That's why we have to keep that spark of Christ. So we can share our spark with others. We might not even know their spark is out. So always share. Always be kind. Always share your spark. Like Mr. Bill shares with us. Say thank you, Mr. Bill. Thank thank you. Mr. for his mother and you know Marianne is frail she wants to be here so much but unable so much of the time but Charles thank you for playing he's going to come now and lead us to the throne of God our most loving and gracious Heavenly Father we just we thank you for another day of life and we thank you for another opportunity to gather with our church family together to worship you, Lord. And 
We thank you for our salvation and for your grace and your mercy and your love and for the strength that you give us. And we, we pray that you will take our lives and, and use us for your glory and use us in every area of our lives, not just here at church, but at work, at school, in our fun times, wherever we may be. Let us be a, a shining light for you, Lord. Now, Father, as we come to the end of another upward season, we just pray that you'll continue to bless this season and keep all the players and all the workers safe in every way and pray that everyone will have a good time and that souls will be one and that our membership here will be increased with active members and people that want to, to work for you, Lord. Now, we just ask as we continue to do your work here in this place that you bless these tithes and these offerings multiply them so we, we can meet our needs. We ask all these things in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Each generation passes the torch on to the next generation. We've always been just one generation from extinction as Christians, but every generation has carried that torch on. We have a prayer that one day those who come behind us will find us faithful. Pilgrims on the journey of the narrow 
road and those who've gone before us line the way cheering on the faithful encouraging the weary their lives are stirring testament to God's sustaining grace surrounded by excavate the ruins of a fallen nation. I hope they find more than aluminum cans and golf balls and Walmart bags because that might characterize many of us today. We've been doing a series on to be or not to be and uh, it's, it's enjoyable. Our first one was to be amazing. Everybody has the option and the opportunity to be amazing, to live a life that's significant. And then with our teens here and focusing on them, we did to be wise. And that was a good one. Last week it was to be generous. And that was a salute. It was not to get you to do anything. It was just applauding you for what you are so generous. Today may be my favorite. To be or not to be faithful. There is a difference between faith 
and faithful. I wrote it out for you. I think you might find this helpful if you use it for the next 20 minutes. Faith is trust, confidence, acceptance of a truth that cannot be proven. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Faithful is being reliable, trustworthy, dependable, and true. In other words, faith is what you have. Faithful is what you are. Faith is believing. Faithful is doing and being. So we're going to look at two things. First of all, what does it mean to be faithful? And it has five parts, all of them necessary. Not just one, but the package. The first one is duty over negligence. Being faithful is duty over negligence. Like a soldier at his post. Like a mother at the crib where her baby sleeps. Like... Um, Getting it done as opposed to letting it go. A young man applied for a job on a farm as a farmhand. And the farmer asked about his qualifications. And he said, well, sir, I can sleep when the wind blows. The farmer didn't know what that meant, but he liked the young man, so he hired him. A few days later, a um, storm woke up the farmer and his wife in the night, a violent storm, and they jumped out of bed to run and see what needed to be done, but they found the shutters were closed, and a set of logs were at the fireplace. So they went outside to check things, and he ran to the barn, but the barn was secured. The animals were safe and calm, and uh, the tools had been put in a shed. And they came back in and found the young man sound asleep. And then they knew what he meant. Because before the storm, he had done his duty and so when the storm comes, he has nothing to worry about. Faithfulness is duty over negligence. Negligence is never kin to being faithful. Being faithful means taking care of what you've been entrusted with. That's why the Bible says it is required in stewards that they be found faithful. Now, there's another part to being faithful. You got that one, duty. The next one is risk over fear. Risk over fear. In the Bible, we're given the story of the man who gave three of his servants certain amounts of currency. Five talents, two talents, one talent. The man who was given five went out and risked it and he doubled it. The man who had been given two went out and risked it and he doubled it. The man who was given one buried it. He was afraid he would lose it. Being faithful means you will take a risk. You will stand up and defend your town. You'll stand up and defend your friends. You'll stand up and defend the gospel because that's what faithful means. Joshua 1, 9, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid or dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We are where we are as a nation because many people have been afraid to speak up. Evil persists when good people are quiet and not faithful to the truth. 
So being faithful means duty over negligence, and it means risk over fear. But there's a third part, and that is excellence over mediocrity. Being faithful means excellence is your goal, not mediocrity. From time to time, I like to gauge our church, see where it stands, not one to ten, but we're not perfect. There is no perfect church. But we strive for excellence in everything we do. So I find us somewhere between excellence and perfection. That's not a bad place to be. Our new hymnal will have a song in it that I grew up with that motivated me. Give of your best to the master. Excellence. Strive for perfection. Settle for nothing less than excellence. So Jane has it ready, and we're looking for a printer, and we'll have it here maybe, hopefully, by Easter. And I can't wait. I'm looking forward to hearing the sound of these hymns like that one. Fill this sanctuary. He deserves our best. And even less than that is pitiable. How would we give him who gave his all for us anything less than our very best? Our best time, our best energy, our best talents, our best resources. So 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, Do all to the glory of God. Do it as unto the Lord, not as unto men. Not half-hearted, but with all your heart. That's being faithful. There's a fourth part, and that's energy over excuses. Don't you love energy? I don't have much right now. I'm, I don't feel good, but it'll come back. But energy is God's grace empowering us to do what he calls us to do. The energy that drives us is God's grace. The faithful says, here am I, use me. I can do all things through Christ. The unfaithful say, well, I'm, I don't feel like doing that. I'm too tired. Uh, it's going to cost too much. My big hero in the Bible, other than Jesus, is Caleb in the Old Testament. I want you to listen to this. Caleb was... Um, in the promised land and Joshua was ready to make assign, assign territories, give them the land. He didn't ask for the pleasant valley, the fruitful plain. Here's what he asked for. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive as he said these 85 years. Ever since the Lord spoke to me and Moses led me out of Egypt, into this wilderness, and today I am 85 years old, and I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Good for you. So now is my strength for war, both for going out and coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain, the mountain where Goliath's family lived, the giants, the fearsome people. For you heard in that day how the Anakim, the giants, were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. Energized by the Holy Spirit was Caleb. So James 2.26 says, Faith without works is dead. D-E-A-D. Dead faith is not faith at all. Now, let's go to the last one. Faithful means perseverance over resignation. Perseverance over resignation. Revelation 2.10, be thou faithful unto death and I will give you a crown of life. No quitting, no, no slacking, no dropping out. A chaplain 
was ministering to a dying soldier in World War II. And he said to the soldier, do you have a message for your mother that you want me to take? And the soldier said, yes, sir. Tell my mother I died happy and proud. Anything else, soldier? Yes, sir. I want you to write my Sunday school teacher and tell her I still remember all her lessons and that I am dying as a Christian. So the chaplain did those two things. And then a few weeks later, he got a letter from that Sunday school teacher. It read, only last month, I resigned from my Sunday school class for I felt that my teaching was doing no good. And scarcely had I given up my appointed work than I got your letter. I'm going back to my pastor at once and I will tell him that I want to continue teaching in Christ's name and I'll be faithful to the end. See, being faithful means you persevere. You don't resign. Don't give up. No excuses. Or else one day, instead of hearing him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, you may hear him say, you're excused. Be faithful. Now here is the other point of the whole message. Why should we be faithful? First of all, because Jesus is watching. He's watching. Not only that great cloud of witnesses, but Jesus. Do you want to let him down? Do you want to disappoint him? You see, when the disciples were in that boat out on the Sea of Galilee in a storm, the Bible says he saw them toiling. He saw them like he sees you caregiver. He sees you, laborer. He sees you, dad. He sees you, mom. He sees you in all of your struggles. And I know many of you struggle. God sees that. Be faithful, and you'll never be sorry. You will not let him down. Now, there's another reason to be faithful, and that is because a record is being kept. These aren't idle Times. These are critical, crucial times. And when we do something in his name, it's noted. Every deed is recorded. A book is kept. Every Christian is a book in God's library. Your name is on it. And at the Bama, they'll pull that book out and open it up. And there it is. All that you've done for Christ. All your good deeds. Now, if you're not saved... Your book is full of all your sins because they've not been canceled. They've not been forgiven. They've not been paid for. All of them. Every one of them. So, Christian, be writing in your book. The Bible says you can't give even a cup of water to another person without God noting it and rewarding you for it. It starts with just that. Look how far it can go as you give your time. As you, you know, people marvel at our upward program. They come in and give devotions and, and they are just so moved by what you give and what you do and what you make happen. It's all being recorded. It's going in the book. And a wonderful book it will be. Write a chapter every day if you can. There um was a man on his way to Jericho and he got beat up and robbed and left for dead. A priest came by and walked by on the other side. Then the Levite, one of the scholars of the law came by, he walked by on the other side. And then a Samaritan, not well thought of, a race despised. A Samaritan came by and saw that and got off his pony 
ministered to that fella, bound up his wounds, put him on his own pony, took him to the next inn down the road, paid for his keep, and said, if you need any more, put that on my account, and I'll pay you when I come back. Now, what do you want in the book? Do you want it in there that you passed on by? That you didn't care? That you didn't have time or interest to help? Or do you want to be that Samaritan? So, writing a book. And it's going to be such good reading at the Bama. Like, remember when you took up for that kid, they were bullying at school? Like, when you ran errands for that elderly person? Like, when you paid a bill for someone who could not pay their bill? It's all in the book. It's all going to come out. Great is your reward in heaven. Now, one more reason we should be faithful. Because we will be judged. And how will we be judged? Were we negligent? Fearful? Mediocre? Excuse-making? Or will it be we were duty-bound and we ventured forth and we were unafraid and we were excellent striving for perfection? We will not only be judged, but we're going to be rewarded on that basis. And we should be faithful because it's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Are they written there for you? Yes. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. I mean, if you have the Spirit of God in you, you've got love, you've got joy, you've got peace, you've got patience, you've got kindness, you've got goodness, and here's number seven, you've got faithfulness. You are faithful. It's he who, dwelling in you, helps you to be faithful, gives you the empowering motivation to be faithful and then gentleness and self-control you got to be faithful in the arena that god has led you to everybody is not a teacher everybody's not a choir member are they everybody is not wealthy everybody can't cook and clean, but everybody can come to church. I remember an old fella who couldn't hear a lick and couldn't see, but he was brought to church every Sunday. Couldn't hear. And someone said, why do you go? And he said, to show whose side I'm on. We're living in the post-Christian era now. There's a great falling away. But that was predicted. And it's going to end all right. There should be a falling away. There comes a time when you've got to find out who's in and who's not. And then God takes that little Gideon army and he does great things with it. So here's the conclusion. Why this topic made the list. The list goes on for the next 10 weeks or so. But here is why being faithful made the list. We have a Supreme Court with justices who are not faithful to the Constitution. We have senators and a president who are not faithful to the oath of their office to defend and preserve the Constitution and the country. Many House of Representative members are pro-communists. They've identified 60 of them who lean towards socialism and communism, our own representatives. They're not faithful to the oath they took. Media people are not faithful to the regimen of honest reporting. 
They prostituted their profession. They're not reporters. They're propagandists. They're not faithful to their calling. There are teachers who are into CRT so big and they're not faithful to the truth. There are many churches no longer faithful to God's word. You have to be faithful no matter what it costs you. But here's why this topic made the list. Psalm 12, verse 1. Look at it. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases, for the faithful disappear from among the sons of men. Is that not happening? Everywhere you look, faithful men are disappearing. And it's going to kill our nation. It's going to kill the church. But Paul said, and here is the essence of a faithful man. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept the faith. That is the essence of being faithful. I sense that you're faithful, but our faithfulness could improve. You know the biggest room in your life? The room for improvement. We're not there. We're not where we could be. So let's get there. Be faithful, and you'll never be sorry. So Father, you've been so faithful to us even when we didn't know you. You came into our lives. You weren't picky or selective. You said, whosoever will, come unto me and I'll make you. You've done that here in this sanctuary, row upon row. And you'll do it again in every time and everywhere we turn to you. You'll make us amazing. You'll make us wise. You'll make us generous. And Lord, you can make us faithful. Help us to be faithful to you all the way. In whatever capacity you've given us to the maximum of our ability find us faithful while the game is still on make us a winner an overcomer a more than a conqueror one who was faithful all the way and we'll praise you and thank you forever for the privilege of being faithful to you and this we pray in the name of Christ, ever faithful to us. Amen. Let's stand now and sing our uh, hymn of response, Living for Jesus.
little time to process things, you know. Next Sunday will be the second anniversary of the shutdown. We're almost back. You're very close to being back. You're that close to having it all back, you know. You're faithful. It's good. Marshall and I prayed for President Zelensky in Ukraine. We prayed with uh, Kyrie, who uh, has some more physical problems to come up. She goes every month to Nashville for infusion. The kid has had a hard time, and it doesn't look like it's going to get easier for a while, but we're going to pray for Kyrie, okay? And new doctor and maybe a breakthrough there. And Sharon came to rededicate her life to the Lord. It's been 60 years since I baptized her there. And I want you to come. I'm going to have her stand up here with Sandy. I want you to come down and greet because I want her to rub off on you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, some of you can continue to rub off on her. But anyway, we're going to close with a little chorus from a uh, great old hymn, Moment by Moment, I'm Kept in His Love. Let's sing it and then come and, and just uh, love on Sharon this morning. All right? God bless. Mm -hmm.